Hey guys, I recently did a uh, low run production lathe job out of this three and a half inch Delrin material. I had to make 40 parts. Uh, so this is op one. I put together a quick little video to show you guys kind of uh, my tooling setup and how I went about making this uh, relatively simple part. Um, but in the end, I was pretty happy with how it came out because it really could do this part in about 15 minutes, which is uh, which I thought was actually pretty fast. Okay, so to start this job, um, I go and uh, open the three-jaw chuck on my lathe and make sure that the jaws are extra clean because the metal on Delrin, if there's any oil in between um, surfaces, can really affect that and Delrin can pop out if you end up pushing it a little harder um, than normal. So I like to clean the surfaces with rubbing alcohol, which you can't see here. I edited that out. It was off camera anyways. Um, so I chuck up the material, uh, put a good amount of uh, pressure on those jaws. Uh, the end of these, as you saw just a few seconds ago, that just stays in the chuck and that's just a pretty much a scrap piece. So it doesn't matter if I mar that surface. So here I'm putting machine at, I believe, in about 500 RPM, running at about 10,000 feed rate, uh, which is relatively conservative because the Stellrin is essentially free machining. You can push it as hard as you want. Uh, but it also depends on your work holding and a few other factors. So lock the compound down. Um, here I'm using a CCMT uh, 21.5 high polish, high positive insert. I'll uh, include a picture of that here. So this is a, a 5 8 holder, um, the CCMT. Uh, it's just from Shards, but I couldn't be happier with these tool holders. I've had really no problems with them at all, uh, especially with that uh, high polish, high positive um, sharp insert. Works really well. So here I'm facing off. Uh, the front of the part, and I don't do the entire piece because I'm going to put an internal taper in there, uh, which is coming up in the next couple operations. So just to save time, because I was making 40 of these parts, I wanted to obviously get them done as fast as I can. Uh, so I come in, face, and then I uh, do the OD turn, and I do have a digital readout, but the thing is with that, it does not repeat, because as you'll see, instead of the next couple operations, I do a, uh, a large internal taper, a uh, 30 degree taper. So uh, the position of that compound is inaccurate. You can't get it back to the same spot. So I have to go in and um, check the dimension, which it just adds a, kind of another operation to this part, but it's not so bad. Uh, so I'm turning this up to, I believe it's a two and a quarter shoulder. Uh, so I overshoot it a bit because, like I said, that piece of material that stays in the chuck, that's just scrap. So that's just essentially for work holding. So come off the part, and I'm just going to get a rough dimension here with a six inch dial caliper, see where I'm at. So after that, um, I can go in and check with the micrometer, three to four mic. Uh, I believe these parts were about maybe three and a quarter, three and a half inches. Um, once this part finished, I had to you know ship it out that exact day, so I didn't really have time to uh, go through and uh, film Actually, I didn't really film in the other operations. This is just one op, but I didn't have uh, too good of photos or anything like any content really when the job was done. So, um, so here I'm going to go in and take off the final dimension, just a, a cleanup pass. Uh, but the, the Delrin machines beautifully, and it machines even better if you have a high positive, high polish insert like the one I'm running here, uh, which obviously can be a sheet cheap doing high speed steel. Um, it's just these are so accessible. Uh, real happy with them. So doing the final turn here. And again, I'm running it about, um, I believe I dropped the final feed for the finish to around maybe 7 thou. Um, I know I was probably roughing at about 10 thousandths. Uh, per revolution, but to get a good surface finish, I just I just dropped it down a bit. Um, so come in, pull the pull the tool off the part to prevent any um, marks by drawing it back across the part there. Um, so my my OD and my face are square to each other. I know like uh, earlier in the video you could see a little bit of run out in the part, uh, which really doesn't matter because it has enough material on it that's going to get machined away. So here I'm going to start doing the. Um, the ID, so I do a center drill obviously and then I'll um, to get it started and because it's Delrin is so soft I mean you're just feeding it 
essentially as fast as you can. So now I'll switch to a three quarter inch silver Deming uh, drill bit, just just for clearance, because after this you'll see I'll use a um, 5 8 boring bar. And I just have the GoPro mount it right on the tail stock, which works really well to uh, get a good shot. So I'll drill this out essentially until the flutes disappear there, and then you really have to peck much more often because the chips just load up inside the flutes. So I'll pull this back and then switch over to uh, actually just this brass like half inch rod, which I'll use uh, later on in the next operation or the two more operations down to catch the part when it's. Uh, when it when I part it off, so here I'm going to switch and do the ID uh, 30 degree taper. So I'll include a photo of the uh, how I indicated the, t the compound in. I, I just put it on 30 degrees and checked it um, with this uh, indicated method on like a 30 degree center, and it was actually pretty close. But then I bumped the compound around, so I'll include a photo now. So this method worked really well. Um, okay, so now I have a. Uh, 5 8 CCMT boring bar. This is also a Shars tool, but um, I like using that uh, CCMT 21.5 uh, for some of the lighter work. Uh, well, especially like in a Delrin or aluminum, doesn't matter. But um, the sh that insert is the same insert as on the um, the turning tool. So I actually I made this little uh, yoke attachment for um, Milwaukee drill, uh, so I don't have to turn the compound by hand. And this worked really well. The uh, one thing that I probably should have done was I went whoop to a larger boring bar. So this 5 8 boring bar with maybe two and a half inch stick out did have some ta um, chatter and you can hear that um, kind of in the middle of the part where the RPM, where the diameter changes and then um, you're kind of fighting that uh, different RPM. So it seemed to want to run better towards the larger RPM, or the larger part of the uh, section of the part. Um, but there was some clearance in there because I want I needed that three quarter inch hole through it. Um, so other than that, it was okay for roughing. And then when I went to go finish, I just have to be real careful and feed the tool in as slow as I can. So here, um, uh, put the um, machine down to low gear, so around 100 RPMs. So put some uh, just a sharpie marker on the outside because there's a, uh, a tangent lip uh, on the face of this part. And so I go in with a scribe essentially and put a mark there. To where I want that, I think it was about a hundred thousandths um, lip on the face of that part. So, so then I'll go in and just run the boring bar up until that line just disappears. So, yeah, now I'm back up to my uh, maybe 500 RPM. And another thing is when I'm not using the. Um, the feed on the machine, other than the X and the Y, I'll disengage essentially the lead screw, so uh, it's just one less mechanical piece running. So I'll just disengage that just in case I get in trouble, let's say, and bump the, um, the engagement lever. So that's just a safety thing that I've always done. Um, so here, yeah, you can hear that chatter. Um, but like I said, on my final pass, I really just did it as slow as I could, um, which took some finesse because the drill mechanism or the switch or the uh, button on the, the drill motor, uh, I had to hold it with like two hands just to keep it from, keep myself from pulling the trigger all the way. And also this Delrin, it, you can see it just shoots everywhere. Uh, that was a bit of a hazard. Uh, and it's, it's very loud, so it has a terrible harmonic noise. Um, so I'm wearing earplugs. So here, just kind of getting close to that line, just making just minute adjustments on it. And I believe I have the carriage locked here. Uh, that's also just in case I bump the hand wheel on the C-axis to prevent changing my position. So here I'm set up probably right on the money. And you can see just trying to go as slow as I can. Got this internal taper. 
and the finish wasn't too bad. The nice thing with Delrin, it kind of just, since it's white, you, it's hard to see, so you can kind of hide a few blemishes uh, when it comes to deburring if you don't get a spot, and also the material's so soft, there's no real chance of uh, uh, cutting yourself or anything. Ooh, okay, so that internal taper is done. So now I think I just um, put a light polish. Let's see here, um, or lock the compound. So I'm going to need. The, I'm going to do parting after this. Um, after that internal taper. Or actually, I'm sorry. This is uh, just facing off, just to clean up that line and that sharpie mark. Um, and I'll take off maybe just a couple thousand, so it really won't change the overall dimension of the part. So I'll come in and just, just with a dial caliper, roughly measure that lip, which is really hard to get right. So I'm just using my, you know, kind of the best method I know how to do that. So now I'm going to do some polishing. I switched the machine to low gear, 100 RPM, and you can see how I hold my right wrist with my left hand. I feel like this is a safest method I know of to do hand polishing on a machine, so I have a little bit more rigidity holding my hand like that. Um, whereas I was just had you know my hand free there, I could slip pretty easily. I feel so. I like to do this method, and then I also you can't see if I have my right foot on the brake. So if anything happens. Uh, hopefully I could slam that brake down and lock the machine up. Uh, so this is my parting tool. This is a, I'll include a photo of that here. So again, this is another Shars tool. Uh, it's a blade style parting tool, 120 wide insert. Uh, you can see in the back there, it has, I broke that uh, parting off aluminum. So maybe another piece of three inch aluminum all the way through. Uh, the thing is with those, they're not incredibly rigid, so you almost need to do part on each side of your actual part, or just have some clearance there. But uh, those do break occasionally. Um, but in the Delrin, it's, it's you don't really have to worry about it too much. So the most obviously the most important thing is to have that parting tool as square as you can to the machine. So I uh, always indicate that um, tool post in. Uh, on the actual tool that I'm using, um, the most critical one being that parting tool. So, uh, if you do that, it um, should be okay, but I don't use this one as often, mainly for just doing soft materials, that blade style parting tool, um, but for this it works great. So I move in that um, piece of half inch brass solid round just to catch the, catch the tool. So when I do parting, I like to, really easy on my machine is I'll just go from if I'm machining at say 500 rpm I can there's a switch go between high and low I'll just go and switch between into low which drops the rpm essentially in half um, so I'm gonna run this at about two, 250 and my feed they usually run about 5,000 per rep on a parting tool uh, and it, it just hasn't really given me any trouble I'm sure I could push this harder or go with a higher rpm and maybe even a lower feed rate but um, I'm pretty happy with this and it's you know, it doesn't take too long. You can hear it here getting down to the end of the part. So, just getting ready to, um, and just turn the machine off. Um, it's a bit of a fear sometimes. If you parts them off big like that, it'll catch. And that's why if you have a rod on the end, you're less likely to get that part wedged between the chuck and the compound or the chuck and the carriage. So here's the part. That's 30 degree internal taper. Um, and that's just op one. So thanks for watching.